Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Ask a Puppy Trainer Show. This is Jon Snow. He's made an appearance before. <laughs> I'm Bethany. This is Sparky. And this is episode 142. And Sparky is on his phone because he's trying to bring up TikTok. That's why he's being incredibly rude and not loud in my ear, which is really nice. Welcome! For, which is really nice for a change, or at least it was. Okay. You asked for it. <laughs> I'll tell you. All right, everyone. You can put your comments below. And uh, we would love to answer your questions. Please put the age and breed of your puppy. It does need to be a puppy, not a two, you know, plus year old dog. We have probably 25, 30 questions we go over every Wednesday now. So if it doesn't have to have a puppy, we're going to probably deviate to the puppy ones. Yeah, yeah. So uh, real quick, we want to address some excellent comments from our biggest fans. Oh. So we we recently, or Josh, recently put out a video, our editor, that had to do with a puppy crying in crate, and we said not to give them a treat when they're crying in crate. And um, the feedback we got was pretty incredible. Okay, Little Canvas Life says, bull <coughs> advice to give you more issues that they're just gonna have to solve later. If your dog is crying in the crate, you haven't done enough work to make your dog comfortable. This, this person has some real conviction. I like them. Feed them in crate, play games going in, going out. Uh, train crate calmly, close the door, open it, throw in food. Do the, oh, what, is that how you feel about it too? Close the door until, oh yeah, throw in food. Do this uh, until there is no more whining, no more issues. Then and, all, then and only then work on increasing the time. Don't ever open it um, if they whine, though. That's good advice. What's her name? Little Canvas? Little Canvas Life. Wait, I'm not done. Okay, I'll wait. I'm just... Don't I'm ever open it if they whine, though. Wait for a calm, then open it, and don't push it that far again. It's like you're a dog trainer. Yeah. Little Canvas, you're absolutely right. On everything almost everything. You said, almost everything. Yeah, almost majority of it. They're tossing treats. It's, it's, really, it's really funny. That's what we do here. At Puppy Academy. <laughs> However... It sounds like you've never truly worked with an extremely high yeah. crate anxious dog because not a single thing you wrote there would help with that. Well, not a single thing. Well, it has more to do with what you do outside of crate mm -hmm. than in the crate itself. You would, we would still do all of these things to but build a dog to that level. But it's not going to help with the actual separation anxiety and yeah. giving a dog a reward for having anxiety, like severe anxiety. They're probably not going to take it anyway. And if they do take it, it's going to whip them into a frenzy. A what lot of you times. pet is what you get. If yeah. you reward anxiety with food, with pets, with love, you're promoting anxiety with food, pets, and love. Now we are now we do training sessions with dogs with separation anxiety that include everything you said except. We do not give treats when they're whining. That that is the only exception. Our, here, John Snow hey John. is yeah. You want to switch boy. me? Um, I don't know if he's trying to get to you or if he's just a little he's restless today. So anyway, <laughs> everything you said is exactly how we, yeah. we teach. But, You're not wrong. But but except for giving them food while they're like working them while they're whining. No, we don't give attention for a dog whining and crate. You wait till they're calm, then you let them out, then you can do your normal routine. But um, yeah, it's really interesting what you said. It's almost like you've been following us and listening to our advice. Thank you. <laughs> and there was another comment oh, that yeah. was after that one. And this was um, from another dog training place. That something about uh, wanting to unfollow us. Bye. Bye. Because, <laughs> because we don't want you here, buddy. We don't want you here if you don't like our advice, that's fine. We're here for the people who need it. And if you train another way and you've got thousands and thousands of successful puppy stories with severe separation anxiety, more power to you. And by the way, there are about a million people out there that have to put their dog in a crate, their puppy in a crate and walk away. They cannot spend the first three months of their life working their puppy up until there's no whining for them to leave. There's, there's millions of people that have to just put their puppy in a crate and go to work and have a life. We're here for those people, yeah. okay? The people who can't do that can go to the other dog training. All judgment left. aside, no, this little judgment. little canvas, you were right with your advice. No, not all However, of it. Okay, well, some of it you were right with your advice. However, not every dog is a light separation anxiety dog or crate anxious dog. Some yeah. of them have severe crate anxiety, severe separation anxiety. But I'm not, and I, I'm not gonna create a pushy puppy by tossing food in yeah. as they're staring at me whining. Like, let's give food for when they're jumping up on you. There's a lot of different types of dogs, and there's a lot of different training methods for those okay. dogs. If it works, awesome. 
I don't think it will. <laughs> okay. Well, so, is that the spot? Look, 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 all right, we dog. are moving on. And we have a comment on uh, Instagram. Yeah, so quite a few paintings. Man, come on now. Work with Scroll me up, here. up, up. My up. phone doesn't want to. Okay, you got to hit the chat. It's not working. Scroll up on the chat. Oh. It's not. Oh. Well, it's only letting me do it that you much. You probably got sweaty fingers. I think it's what it is. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to figure out my phone, and you are going to read one of these short ones. There you go. Pick one, any one. All right. We have Nicole Shepard. Oh, it's a continuum. I'm sorry, we'll come back to them because I don't know where it started. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. He's helping. He's helping. Can you make a schedule for me for my 10-week-old Ibizan hound? Haven't seen one of those yet. Uh, should my puppy sleep in his crate overnight? Um, oh, in, in night one. Yeah, I would have him sleep in the crate night one, just so you could really get on top of it. Uh, if you guys do want the crate schedule uh, on our blog, or what is it? Link in bio. There's a link in bio, and there's a free masterclass for you guys to check it out. You'll get more information, and it'll help you guys build one. Yeah. That's better than me just giving you one, because that one you build for yourself. Yeah. All right, one more. Francie and Darla, 17-week-old cockapoo. How to stop barking at older dogs when older dog has desired toy. So it sounds like she's the man barking, honestly, probably having a leash on that puppy, being able to control that space a little bit better, and then teaching a good recall. So working every morning on teaching good recall, using your food, using your kibble, five to 10 repetitions over 20 seconds, give a short pause, do another five to 10, and then you build up enough recall to where when your, dog ha your older dog has the toy, your younger dog is waiting to get the toy back, you can puppy come, redirect them away, and redirect them to a different toy. Pull them into a different space. Most time that demanding behavior is just them trying to get to something that they can't get. Well, yeah, you're adding in a resource. So I need more context. Uh, were these dogs playing, were these puppy and older dog, were they playing together and interacting? And now the older dog is taking the toy to the corner to chew on it because then play is over. Drop it, pick up toy, toy goes back in the toy box if the older dog is no longer doing a give and take play scenario, okay? And if so, it's like my dog's at home where my older dog one just wants to hold it and her younger one wants to bark at her, then, then that's yeah, a no. Then, that's then a hard no. That's, that's not a game that, that they can play. And so then I might put up, um, if I can't watch them, there has to be a divider between the two of them because you're adding in a valuable resource and the little puppy will get more and more pushy over time. Mm -hmm. Just like Jon Snow was not wiggly and pushy like this the last time he was here. Okay, your he foot- wasn't like that with me. Your foot is stuck. Okay. And so the other thing I would say is that uh, does if they don't play interactively together, one dog has their own toy, the other dog has their other toy, and there's a boundary up if you can't watch them and supervise that. I have a dog, Dakota, she's sweet as pie, but she likes to go and take things and put them underneath her and lay on top of them. So she will take every toy that any dog has. And so all the toy work is when I'm playing with my dog or I'm supervising give and take play, and once they don't want to do that anymore, toys go away. It's resources can be um, really dangerous if left unsupervised. What ends up happening is older dog gets frustrated, younger dog gets older and more pushy and more dominant. Older dog sees that younger dog is a threat and one day snaps at him for trying to get the toy and yeah. barking at him. So that's the that's the progression of what can lead to. It's yeah. better to what do what she said to. to prevent getting to that point. All right, Riley Bird Martin off of Instagram says, my 16 week old golden doodle will not stop barking when tethered during supervised separation, any advice? I'm trying to ignore it and she will settle, but it doesn't seem to help much. Ooh, I gotta talk about Jinx. Jinx, oh yeah, Jinx. Go. So, Jinx is the definition of this. So Jinx doesn't bark um, because of the breed, they just don't really bark much, uh, but this dog like almost pulled out her shoulder and she's a puppy, she's a very driven crazy puppy, being back tied. And she's been taught place, fairly, knows how to reset herself. They've done all the things that we say to do before you back tie a dog and supervise separation. And Jinx still was doing that and they had to stop or they had to take a break and, or use different tools. Like we've, we've been trying all kinds of things. And so my point is just that your dog isn't ready for that yet. They're not ready to be back tied because you're getting barrier frustration without the fence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, the leash is a barrier. That's why dogs become reactive on leash. 
And so you're accidentally creating barrier frustration. Your puppy's not ready for it yet. So what I would say is, unfortunately, you're gonna have to do a little bit more crate time and then bring your puppy out with you, have them tethered to you on leash and place within three feet from you, maybe to start with it's right next to you, and you do your work and you reset, and you do your work and you reset, or, or no, I have another one, 16 week old puppy might not be able to do place duration yet, so um, have a place cot there next to you so he can choose that if he wants to, but he just can't hit the end of the tether. So every time he hits the end of the tether, you can give a little tug or guidance back in, depending on how soft your dog is, you could drop a few pieces of food on the ground, but keep it really low key so you're not doing too much interaction. So there's no tension on the end of the leash. Probably a combination of food and a few little checks of the leash might do it where they give up and just kind of, see, yeah, this is the problem today. <laughs> Bye, John Snow. He's getting pretty wiggly. I think he's got to pee. Can we um, let them know he has to pee? They, to where your puppy eventually is like, well, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. I'm not interested in the Nyla bone that you gave me. I guess I'll just oh, be bored. And that's what you're going and for. And then you pat yourself on the back because you got the side. Don't pat your dog. Yeah, don't <laughs> pat, pat your yourself dog. on the back. And then, you know, you only, may, you only might get five minutes of that and you know your puppy's about to get up again and put him in crate. But, uh, but that's, that's what I would do. And I would make sure that when you do transfer your puppy to crate or you're doing training or play or something like that, don't do it until your puppy at least semi settles. Don't do it when your puppy is like still confused and pulling on the end of the leash. If you get 10 seconds of settling, everybody can take a breath then put them in crate, then play with them, then do you know the other thing. I think the do. easiest progression to getting to the point to where you can back tie them on place is the pressure work that she mentioned. Literally, every time they go, tension release until they eventually settle. That's how we get dogs to it, yeah. to eventually be able to do a back tie from 20 feet away or 10 feet away sitting on the couch, they're by the entertainment center, and you're able to watch TV with your puppy settling in sleep. It takes us about two, three weeks of doing the four to six foot leash, being right next to place, teaching every time they get off and move towards us, pressure up and back, onto place, get them to settle, relax the arm, yeah. relax your posture. You're, you're getting into the questions know, that I'm people getting are in asking. The weeds. I'm getting in the weeds. So, this is my okay, favorite part, can, we, can we move on? Yeah, I really enjoy that part though. <laughs> Madison, well, you'll like this one then. Yeah. Madison C. Amos says, four month old Yorkie barking at anyone coming in the door. Any advice on that? Listen to the last half of the last question and keep going on place, <laughs> on your place work. <laughs> no, I don't like the barking question. You take the barking question. I like the crate question. You, te you teach place. It's not a crate question. You teach place. And so you want to, first you want to give your puppy a redirect. So uh, alert barking, no big deal. But then when I say done, you're done. So bark, bark, bark. All right, puppy come. Good. Place, clip leash on. Got food pouch on my desk table or counter or wherever it's close to the door. Good piece of food. Good piece of food. And then you walk together to the door to get the package or you teach a stay on place. Did you mention leash? Those are your, those are your options. Yeah. So you, you call the puppy back. Come, place sit good food clip leash on good food good food good food walk to the door with your puppy stop every few feet sit food or work up to them staying on place remember um, to do your relationship building exercise to build up the ability to get that come in a difficult situation leash is your leverage and your backup but if your dog isn't coming to you in low stimulation environment yeah, situations yeah, yeah. you got to build that up more for you to get come in this in this situation as well how do you get come in place when someone knocks on the door you practice it every day in other situations. When there's not someone knocking at the door. Exactly, and then you practice, practice with Amazon delivery, practice with all that. All right, my puppy poops every time she is in crate after spending ages in the garden. Oh man, that's tough. All right, so I heard the word ages, and I assume you're out there for 15, 20 minutes, but it doesn't sound like your puppy's out there for the reason that they need to be, which is they are out there for potty and urgency. Potty. urgency. Yes, we have to create that urgency. So how do we create the urgency? We use the crate in combination with them going outside for the potties, but the time outside is like two minutes max. Puppies in crate, they come out of crate, leash and harness. You have them set the threshold of the back door. You take them outside. You give them two minutes in one spot standing like a tree. Then go left, right, forward, back, front foot, back foot, whatever they want. But you do not move your position. And when they eventually settle or lay down and they don't go potty, you actually put them back inside the crate for about 10 to 15 minutes. Did you give yeah. me an age? No, age? I don't know. Um, I'm going to assume four to six months. So I'd probably do about 10 to 15 minutes at four to six months. 
any younger than that, maybe about five to 10 minutes. And after that time window, I'm actually gonna take them back outside and tell them to go potty again. I'm waiting for them to make the connection of they're out here for a task and when they accomplish that task, then they get the free time, whether it's staying outside to do free time out there or it's coming in doing training, walk, play, all of that good stuff. 11 weeks old and they spend over an hour. 11 oh, weeks old, yeah. okay, yeah. You're, 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 you're looking puppies, for two minutes. Your puppy's just hanging out. Yeah. But I say two minutes for pee, for a poop two to five minutes. And you also yeah. might need some more exercise. So you might do the crating for 10, 15 minutes and then play outside, an interactive mm -hmm. play, training for five minutes. Give, then ignore, see if they poop. If they don't, crate again 10, 15 minutes. So you, you need to create some urgency. Sometimes don't. it's also just giving them their meal. It kind of pushes everything through yeah. to get it ready. Playing around um, at meal time. That's how my dog is. We can, get a pee, we can get a potty in the morning, feed meal, do all our normal stuff, but we're not gonna get a poop until after we feed the meal. And that's pretty much the only time that we won't get a poop is if she hasn't eaten her meal. All right. Um, Gabriella says, what are some methods to get puppies to stop biting clothing uh, and stop biting me in clothing. What are the best ways to get them? Oh, okay, so we'll do the clothing one. I wanna start with the me. So the biting at you, a lot of time that's more relationship. That's not that the puppy is nipping or teething or necessarily any of that. It could be we're giving maybe too many pets, we're not doing enough training. The there wrong, has to the be a balance, kind, yeah. The wrong kind so of pets. So when your puppy is high energy and they're already trying to, they're wiggling, they're goofy and they're silly and you try to pet them during that time, they want to play or they want to train. They don't really want love in that moment. So they tend to feel overstimulated quickly and they turn yeah. around and kind of start mouthing at you. Because touch, touch create, touch just like movement creates stimulation. stimulation. Yep. So to take that away from you, take that need to bite away, you use that energy in a more proficient way. Crazy puppy energy goes in a lot of channels. Play, training, walking, biting and jumping. Yeah. You take away that final channel, you do a little bit more constructive play, doing fetch, doing tug and drop. Yeah. You do more training so you can use the brain, uh, use the energy mentally. You do a little bit of walking so you get them out there kind of experiencing the outside world in they, a controlled way. They need to be doing stuff in order for you to even pet them mm -hmm. in the first place yep. because they need to earn rewards. Affection is a huge reward and it can also become very toxic for some types of puppies, some personalities. So that's what you really want to be careful. You don't want them to see you and see hands as something always coming at their face to be pet because it's natural. They're, they're just going to chew on you. Right now, I've got a six-month-old that's biting everything. She's biting my fingers. She's biting uh, the remote. She's grabbing at things, pulling them in her mouth. Take that times 100 for a puppy. Mm -hmm. And so when you go and pet your puppy, when they are calm, they have to be calm first, stop going in for the face and the ears. Go for the body, the chest, the shoulder, really calm massage. And if you want to scratch them, dogs love scratchies, especially around the neck and butt, slow your fingers down. Make sure they melt into it rather than getting aroused by it. And if they still get aroused by it, then hands off. I'm not saying you can't pet your puppy in the head. I'm saying get the melting first, mm -hmm. then work up to the head. And if you get like an ah, and then back back off because that's not a if puppy, I get if I get a, a tooth on my finger I'm done petting period. well see I as, for me it depends if I created it if the puppy is calm and I went to their head and they went ah, like that for me that's like calm mouthing that's not even biting and so that's a that's a me problem not a puppy problem I need to stay away from their face because that's a really common retriever instinct for instance they'll do calm mouthing but it can get really bad if you allow it and so just keep that in mind and then keep a leash on your dog so that way if it gets really bad with clothing you can do leash pressure up out and away from you no but also carry treats on you when your puppies are out guys like come on that now, should be a universal rule everyone yeah. who has a puppy should have a pouch on their hip the minute that dog comes out of the crate bingo and we're talking about puppies under five months old mm -hmm. if you you didn't give an age so if you mean older it's a different ball game come back next week all right uh, you've got a question on there why don't you answer one on TikTok? TikTok. Oh, I got a lot of good ones. All right. Four month Cocker Spaniel puppy goes crazy barking and crying when I leave the room. Any tips? That's totally normal. Most of the time you can't leave the room for a puppy that that's, that's that young. Most of the time if I leave the room, I'm actually gonna put them in the crate. Um, which is in there, which is in their calm, quiet, dark nap space. Correct. And this is honestly more of a safety issue. It's most of the time when yeah. you leave a room, in 30 seconds, your puppy can, can get himself into a lot of trouble. If you have them even in a playpen, they can jump up, catch their collar on it, they can try to jump over, get a leg caught. There's a lot of different things that can happen. 
But more than that, it just creates a lot of stress. They're still young, they're still understanding what they're supposed to be doing. Our personal preference is if I have a dog in a playpen and I'm gonna leave the room for a minute, I walk out of the room, I come back, I get a little bit of barking, not a huge deal. If I'm gonna be gone for like three, four, five, six minutes to go to the restroom, 10, 20 minutes for that I one. Know. I know, I was, I was being 10, nice. 20 minutes for that. For him, but not for if me. I'm leaving the room for that long, I'm gonna put them in the crate because I know it's safer for them and it's gonna cause less yeah. stress. Exactly. When my puppy is out of the crate, I am almost always with them to some degree. Yep, I mean literally, your option is to go into the bathroom with them on leash and teach them how to do a downstay. Those, that's your other option. I started doing it with my friend's dog. I All go right, check I, on the dog occasionally, downstay in the bathroom with him. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a quick one, I think. Uh, Mans R says, seven month old Peri Doodle, which sounds to me like a bigger dog, eats everything. How do I stop him? Honestly, you need head control. You got a seven month old dog that sounds like he's on the bigger side. There's not a treat in the world that's gonna compete with that delicious leaf over mm -hmm. there. And I, I, with a seven month old, I don't wanna constantly be compromising with treats anyway. So I've got head control. So I would um, look into teaching leash guidance with a slip leash. I'd probably start there. Then I might go to Power Loop. You can look all the stuff up on, on YouTube. And then if you if you want to go like a tool route, then get a one-on-one -on -one trainer or do hardcore research on how to teach a training tool. But you need some sort of head control. Uh, and like that's 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 the first step and then teaching what the leash actually means to follow leash pressure without head control You're basically dem you're basically begging for focus you're using food. Yeah, the more puts, you beg the less value you have exactly puts you in an awful uh, Position Ooh, six Lauren Jones says I like that name Lauren Jones. That sounds familiar the 16 week old border collie fixates on people walking by <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I toss treats, I tug her, I call her once or twice, and she's not gonna budge. Any tips? Good God, what is she trying to do? Hurt, hurt already? <laughs> so I think you might have a hurting dog. Um, I'll see or similar she, advice she, for the last guy. You need be, to get better head control. She could be insecure, but this is a 16 week old baby. This mm. is a baby. How, <laughs> uh, uh, that's on you now, have fun. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay. So I would get some sort of head control, but only if I worked with a one-on-one -on -one trainer or did our program or um, really did a deep dive into YouTube videos on um, maybe slip leash training or something like that, but or maybe a star mark or something, but, but that's not going to solve your problem. It's no. just going to give you more leverage over your puppy. And so what, what I would do is I'm curious if you're on here, Lauren, you know, what, what do you think the root cause is? Do you think your puppy is a little bit nervous? I'm seeing if there's a, if you were on here, but um, do you think your puppy's a little bit nervous of people? And what does a border collie do when they're nervous or happy? Stalk people, <laughs> stalk, th stalk things. And then bite them in the ankle. And then bite them in the ankle. And um, like, go ahead, move fast, move, I dare you. And so uh, that's what I wanna know. Do you think this comes from nervousness? If you do, there's actually a lot of other prep work you need to do, like maybe go to a park, and uh, that way you have more breathing room rather than on the sidewalk. Make sure you're giving your puppy a ton of space. So if I've got um, people coming out of the house, you know, like on my normal sidewalk, I'm gonna bubble out and around the cars or even cross the street. Whatever threshold um, my puppy can, can handle. By threshold, I mean, when can they pay attention to me at least a little bit? Maybe they won't even take food, but at least pay a little bit of attention to me. Crossing the street might sound crazy, but you want to work them as a puppy puppy under their threshold as much as possible. We're not trying to address bad behaviors here with a 16 week old. We want to build up tolerance and comfortability. Thank you for the hearts and over confidence. there. And confidence. And confidence, yeah. And so um, you do want to work them under threshold as much as possible. If that person is like surprises you, I would just with confidence turn and walk. Like, let's go turn and walk. I'm going to see. We call it a purposeful walk. You walk oh, with oh. a lot of purpose behind those feet. I think she just wants to say hi. So it sounds like she's demanding to say hi. Um, and they want to give her a, someone give her a pat. She waits until they look at her. She's very confident. We went to the park yesterday. Oh, okay. So you need to control your dog. <laughs> about confidence okay it usually is it's usually a cop what do you need i just want to see the rest it's, it's usually a um nervous issue so that's why i went i went into that so you just need to control your puppy and so it's actually the same thing you you don't want to be fighting with your puppy and creating a lot of frustration and like competing right so you do need more space and uh you need to do in my opinion 
work on some stuff that's just the two of you a little bit more in the house, in the front yard, maybe place and come in the front yard with the three people that might walk by in a suburban neighborhood over the course of, you know, 20 minutes. If that, you know, if I know the mailman's coming, I might throw a cot into the front yard and do place and come, place and come just for the mailman getting out, putting my mail in, you know, and driving off. You, I would say you need to build a little bit more focus in uh, less intense situations. But if your puppy's demanding to say hi, it's a very firm, let's go, turn, walk, tug of the leash, let's go, and food, good, food, good, food, good. Maybe I have higher value food for just when we see people. So maybe I usually work with kibble with my dog, but I've got, you know, a jerky or something better um, for people. What do you got? Let's be honest. This dog is not going to follow you and turn you say, let's go, and you walk away. It might. Because if this dog is hyper-focused. Well, not on a harness. It no, won't it harness. won't on a harness. And you're probably on a harness. So and that's okay. let, you, let that's us okay. just be clear. You're not looking back. You're just walking and going until you get a little bit of momentum and then you're doing the food work. Then you're trying to get yeah. everything Bethany mentioned. As long as you're not dragging yeah. him. You can't drag the paws across the ground. No. And if you do, you know you're not ready for that situation. You, you need to yeah. do more basic work at home inside outside backyard front yard driveway sidewalk and more and more of a distance that's why i like mm -hmm. the park because it can be busy over there yeah. and then i can be way over here on the path or working off the path just one person walking by at a time you know on a tuesday evening or something a so. park is one of my favorite second owner lessons to do with people yeah. because first lesson you teach the basics which is what she's telling you to do basics inside the home second lesson is introducing outside distractions but in a calmer way because you have a lot of spaces to go yeah. that don't have direct traffic passing by. Yeah. I like it. Okay, one more question and we're gonna go. So this says- Oh shoot. Yeah, I know, it went fast. So do you mean, probably all our sass in the beginning. Um, what do you mean by, okay, so this was off a of video. The video, the video. The video was, should you give your puppy a treat when they stop crying in the crate? We were talking about uh, dogs with more severe anxiety when we said you could eliminate affection for a couple of weeks. Kate Kitten said, what do you mean by eliminate affection for two weeks? I have a 17 week old separation anxiety, crate phobia since the day I got her, which which can happen from a genetic standpoint. And it could be pretty severe if Yeah, that's it case. doesn't mean that Kate, like it doesn't mean, because there's a lot of owner shaming and owners are responsible for a lot of bad behavior, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes you don't realize you're doing it though. Yeah, yeah. I'm working with a behaviorist with gradual exposure to being alone, but she won't leave me alone when I'm home and cries and howls if I'm in another room with a closed door. Ooh, this, I thought this was gonna be shorter than it was, I'm sorry. Uh, this is such a good question. Um, so for, for me, for me personally, the no affection for two weeks, if you're having that bad of a time, Oh, I'm, if I'm working with you, I'm completely redoing your program and, and how you're interacting with your dog during the day. I'm gonna pull affection completely for two weeks. You, and that seems so harsh, but I hope you guys know out there that your dog's affection, your dog's affection, not how you feel and what you want, but your dog's affection comes from teaching them new things, training, uh, play, interactive play, tug, drop, break, mm -hmm. fetch, walks, teaching them boundaries, just like with kids and relationships. Like that is all affection, all of it. Because as far as well, they're concerned, as far as they're concerned, it's us that needs more of the other stuff. I am not saying dogs don't enjoy affection. Of course they do. They can get addicted to it and become very pushy and have all kinds of issues. Which is separation anxiety, yeah, an addiction exactly. to affection. Exactly. And some dogs are genetically more prone to that than others. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, you know, specifically for this person, you don't have just a crate phobia. You, you've you got full blown separation anxiety. And so it might not be a crate phobia. It might just be separation the anxiety. The two weeks of lack of affection is to give you ground zero. Yes. Yeah. to give you a baseline to give you somewhere clean to work slate. off of cleaner slate i said that in the video clean slate yeah clean, <laughs> cleaner slate but but anyway that's that's what we mean by that as far as you know trying to help you with these specifics we don't have time to go in it today but if you go on our youtube and look at all our q a's we do deep dives on some of our q a's um when people have asked us these questions so if you could do that or come back next week join us live we'd be happy to talk i mean we also do have our online school we have a lot of yeah. videos that go over Puppy meditation, calm crate patterning, 
different things you can do with your dog instead of giving affection. And what Bethany mentioned earlier about giving food and training and all that, what we tell our people who are on the two weeks no affection is when you want to give a pet, do a five minute training session and just give food. Because food is a pet to your dog and it's better than a pet could ever be. And how are you petting and when are you petting? Hopefully you're, you're getting, we would actually suggest you get one-on-one -on -one help, or one-on-one yeah, -on -one help and it sounds like you are. Hopefully they are going over when to pet, how to pet, how to calm down your pet after you pet. That was great. All right, guys. I was, we, I was listening. I was like, <laughs> we will see. Well, we're in what? We will see you guys same time, same place next see week. You guys.